Hello. Hello, everyone. Today is Wednesday, July 8th. Um, it's about 7 p.m. or so, and I'm in an interesting situation. So, the weather is looking really nice right now, um, but I didn't really know that until just a second ago. And I already kind of told myself that I'd get up at 4 in the morning to try to image uh, this new comet. Um, so, if I was planning on getting up at 4 in the morning, but it's clear right now, it's perfect. The night is looking really good. And if I'm out imaging until 4, and I had plans to wake up until 4, I think that might be a bit of a problem for my sleep schedule. So, I think tonight, I'm definitely going to try to take some naps uh, just to help offset that sleep deprivation but I'm also super excited for tonight because uh, in the mail today this afternoon actually I got my um, CL or my sorry my UHC filter clip-in filter for my Canon so I'm gonna use that tonight and because I have a clip-in filter now I also have a two inch adapter so I'm tonight will be my first time moving away from the one and a quarter um, anything and it will be a full two inch system so I'm super excited I think tonight I'm gonna try setting up in that church field uh, out there, and I'm gonna try to go for the Lagoon Nebula. It's super bright. I've shot it a long time ago. Well, not too long ago. I guess it was about a year ago. And looking back, it was a bad picture. So I'll, I'll show that at the end of the video too, just to show the amount of growth that I've undergone. Still a long way to go. Um, but also, this time around, I've had like almost 200 feet of extension cords before but tonight I think it's gonna break 250 or maybe 275 feet of extension cords I know it's a terrible idea but desperate times call for desperate measures I guess and I'm still eating dinner right now but as soon as I finish eating it's time to start setting everything up and preparing for the long night ahead one critical thing I should do before I set everything up is probably make some coffee in preparation for what's ahead First day in like two years that I won't be using this five position filter wheel. Right now in it, it's got my RGB filters, it's also got my light pollution reduction filter, and it also has a dark frame filter in there. So tonight it is just the UHC filter and this two inch tube that I got off Amazon for pretty cheap. Uh, it's got the T ring here. And it's got some screws in here so you can actually adjust this in case you need more back focus, which is super nice. It's also got some threads here uh, for a two inch circular filter if you've got one of those. So I'll be using this tonight. Over there in the south, we've got some very nice little cumulonimbus clouds. Those will focus. There's one. There's the other behind those power lines. Most of those I think right now are developing over Cincinnati and Kentucky-ish. Same as last video, had a lot of warm weather here recently and a lot of repetitive daily weather patterns it seems, so yeah, that'll be cool to watch those in the sunset. I also gotta worry about these guys, these cirrus clouds that are coming in. So hopefully those dissipate or aren't that big of a deal. It is hot as heck out here right now. Let's look at the temperature, it's 86. Just a few, like an hour ago, it was up to 91. Um, Temperature is going to be pretty warm tonight. I think the lowest it gets is like 72, pretty close to the dew point. Um, I actually don't really know how bad the dew is going to get tonight. The humidity is like crazy right now, so it's probably going to be pretty bad. Uh, but it's one of those nights where all the bugs are out, so it's time to put on some bug spray. All right, we just clicked in the uh, UHC filter. You notice the brand, it's uh, SV Boney. Few of you may have heard of it. It's kind of the knockoff brand. 
Although reading about it online and looking at the quality, it seems pretty comparable to some of the $120, $150 name brand ones. Um, so again, being a college student and being on a very tight budget, I think this will do more than enough for me. With the guiding problems, I, I guess I'd call them problems that I've been having with the fluctuations in the guiding, uh, I'm going to try east biasing tonight. Um, again, I haven't looked too much into that, how to do it technically, what the best techniques are, so maybe somebody can leave a comment correcting my technique or giving me some advice on this, but uh, since I'm shooting the Trifid, or sorry, the Lagoon Nebula, which will be most of the time spent in the southern skies, um, it won't pass the meridian until a little later, so I'm going to make my whatever is on the east side of my mount heavier, which in this case is the OTA. Um, and the AVXs I've read are kind of notorious for having this like sticky axis, so like I can slide this counterweight up and down by probably five or six inches and it won't budge if I sort of perturb it a little bit. So it's kind of on the verge of tipping towards the OTA side um, on both sides of the axis. It's like you can see it's kind of keeping that momentum going pretty well. Um, I don't want to overdo it, don't want to overdo it, it's kind of hard to um, gauge. So yeah, just somebody let me know uh, how I'm doing. I'll appreciate it. So everything is uh, up and balanced, set up, all the cables are in, everything's out here. Um, pretty much just plugged everything in and nothing is smoking, nothing's caught on fire yet, which is promising. But there it is, first night with the two inch. Nothing one and a quarter, I guess, except for the guide scope, but I don't really count that. And luck has been on my side. Those cirrus clouds are starting to drift north, and the clouds are staying away, and the sky is very, very, very clear. I've taken a few test exposures already just to check the focus and to check the histograms and to double check that the guiding's all right, and there isn't anything weird happening in the, the field. Um, but I'm just blown away already at these single light frames. Yeah, there we go. Oops. Yeah, so this is a, it's kind of hard to focus right now, but this is a single, single frame. And that's what it's looking like. If I zoom in here. You can see so much nebulosity and definition in the, the brights and the darks, and those stars are pretty tight. So I'm very excited for how this is going to turn out. This UHC filter, I think, kills the light intake. So if we look at the histograms, even after four minute exposure, ISO 800 on the Lagoon Nebula, which is one of a few Messier objects that are naked eye visible in dark, dark parks, dark locations, you can see my histograms are even lower than like 25% or so. We have a special guest star tonight, my friend Lauren. She's out here to protect me, in case anybody around here has any funny ideas. But she's also here to provide comic relief, because I'm not good at that. Well, I'm excited to be here finally, after Jared invited me after, what is this, his 10th video? But I'm here, have my coffee, and it's going to be a good night. I think we're shooting the moon, right? Is that what we're shooting yep. tonight? We're, we're shooting the moon. We're, shooting, we're going to the moon. We're going to the moon. It's going to be a good night. I'm ready. Okay. So I made a little dew shield for my laptop. Just a little box that's just wide enough for my laptop and the two USB cords out the side. It's also got a little towel clip to the top so I can drape that down over the night. But we're probably an hour into imaging, maybe a little more, and the, uh, the guiding was pretty messy at first. I mean, the RMS pixel errors were about half a pixel in right ascension and maybe close to one pixel in declination. Uh, but then I calibrated it, and I mean, you can s there it's a night and day difference between the smoothness and the guiding. I should have calibrated before, just as soon as the night started, but I'm still learning. I make mistakes. What's your favorite part about being outside at night? Um, I don't know. I feel like the stuff that I like is like the little kid stuff, like 
looking for the satellites and seeing how many you can find and the um, shooting stars. I've only ever seen like a handful, so. The counterweight is just above the OTA, so it's time to do a little meridian flip. It's about 1.20. I've done the meridian flip. Um, clouds are holding out. Humidity is still crazy high. It's really hot. I'm still sweating just standing out here. Uh, but for the meantime, I have provided myself a little hammock stand, hammock. There's a little bug net that you can't see and a few jackets to try to keep the moisture off my body and one to use as a little pillow. So I might try taking some naps out here just to stand by my telescope. It's time to take a little nap. It's just about 4.30, finished up imaging. I got one or two hours of sleep in my little hammock here. Uh, the dew is pretty bad, it's on most things. I've had a few minutes to wake up, so I might not sound quite as dead as in my previous videos. Um, but I kind of have to rush because it is 4.30 and sunrise is in a little bit. And I want to try to catch Comet Neowise. And I saw somewhere that I just track from Capella to this other bright star to, to the comet, all equidistant. So I kind of need to hurry up. I'm going to go to my local YMCA. There's this giant hill there, which is really good for watching storms and weather. Uh, but it, I think it'll also give a good vantage point um, for imaging this comet. So once I pack everything in, well, first I gotta take some flat frames. Then I'm gonna go in and grab my Ioptron Skyguider Pro. I always mix up the Skyguider and the Sky Tracker. It's the cheaper one. So I'm gonna grab that and my um, unmodded Nikon, take, take a few lenses, and head out to the YMCA. Just a quick update. I think I just missed my perfect window to see Comet Neowise. Um, I was already in a, in a rush to get here, and I think, so here's the uh, sunrise behind me. I don't know if it's too light or too dark. I also don't know exactly where the comet is. I know approximately where it's at, and I probably should have come more prepared, knowing more precisely where it's at to aim my camera a little better. But I think I'm going to cut my losses here. It is currently about 5.40. So, I missed the comet Neowise, but figured I'd capitalize on the situation. So I'm on top of this hill here in my local YMCA, and I decided that I'll be taking a time lapse of the sunrise. See what I'm looking at right now. There's the YMCA over there. It's this massive hill, and the sunrise is just beautiful.